Hi there. Um, a lot of people have posted their you know, favorite albums of the year, and I am going to do that as well. Uh, I picked out 10 records. It's the same 10 records that I posted on other uh, forums, and uh, I, I came, I, I, I found out that one of the records I really enjoyed this year is not on it. And I just don't want to change it for this special video. But I will mention that my number 11 would be the Beastie Boys, you know, uh, their latest album. Um, I forgot the title, Hot Sauce Committee, something, part one, part two, I don't know. But that particular record is, is also one of my favorites of 2011. And uh, these are the top 10. I'm not that good at top 10s, so eventually they might shift but uh, I have some rather you know obscure stuff in there or obscure not that records that not a lot of people showed and I have records that a lot of people showed so it's a mixture of everything starting off number 10 it's a crown family uh, I don't know how to pronounce the title it's s dash or s slash t two so it could be self-titled too the cosmic birth and journey of shinju tnt it's um, a double album on dead oceans and it's a uh, psychedelic folk um, Drony weirdness, kind of. It's it's very beautiful. It has, um, you know, it, it, the title itself with the Shinju TNT. It kind of gives you an idea that it's Japanese based, or at least has an Asian influence, and it does. Um, uh, but it's just, it's, it's it's just its own beast. And Akron Family, I had heard bits and pieces of it uh, on, on compilation CDs and I liked it but this just you know I have to have this this blew me away and I will um, eventually seek out more by this band it still has a shrink on it it's because it has this clear sticker if it was a gatefold I would have ripped off the, the shrink and probably stuck the sticker somewhere but um, I always keep shrink on it when they have special stickers like this. Anyway, awesome album, number 10. Number 9 is Earth, Angels of Darkness, Demons of Light, part 1. Double album. This was uh, a record store exclusive in Holland, which kind of weird. Um, I don't know if it had an official release besides the Record Store Day exclusive. It's on this brownish, greenish color. Um, drone, doomy, but but very uh, soft and quiet. It's, it's not doesn't have like explosions that other Earth albums had, but it's 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 beautiful, well made music. Just well played music as well you know it's just a wonderful five song album three sided lp etching on side four part two is coming out in february can't wait for that this this kind of blew me away uh, not that familiar with earth uh, but it's just i mean the packaging alone is just amazing number nine Number eight, again, a little doomy, droney kind of, no, it's more drone. Drone mixed with <coughs> uh, spiritual music more. And uh, just ex eccentric music. It's uh, Master Musicians of Bukake with Totem 3. It is uh, just a wonderful band. It's a band you enjoy more after you've seen them perform live, and I did. 
and I think um, Andreas, uh, Grecian Thunder, he saw them as well, and he agrees with me, and their show was friggin' awesome. This is what they look like, uh, and what they look like, it's sort of like North African, uh, you know, people who live in the desert, and it sounds like that. It sounds like North African um, music mixed with spiritual music from uh, Buddhist countries. Uh, it has drones. It has it has even doom metal elements in it, but it's more droney and, and it's chanting and it's it's just wonderful, wonderful. It's world music, but with a difference. I love this. Number eight. Number seven is the latest album of Davis. This is uh, Keep You Close. It's just a great package, great songs. There is every time they release an album, it kind of it you know enters my my top ten because I've not heard them do anything you know terrible. Uh, if you don't know Davis, they're a, a rather large uh, rock band from uh, from Belgium who. Uh, you know, they have this certain status that you know, they're the grandfathers of Belgium alternative rock, if you will. Um, after Deus, a lot of bands came that, that went that route, you know. Uh, and uh, I think even the Belgium musicians themselves are, uh, you know, paying dues to this band. Awesome band. Great, great album. Number six. It's the only Dutch band in this update, and it's Rats on Rats, um, a post-punk band that is from this year, 2011. These guys are young. They're very, very, very young. They're, I don't know, maybe not even 20 yet. But these guys play their music like they're uh, a band from the early 80s. Um, they took their influences from a lot of, you know, great Dutch post-punk bands, uh, and they have a spirit of post-punk in them. Unlike uh, bands uh, like Interpol or Franz Ferdinand or uh, Block Party, you know, they, to me, don't have the spirit of post-punk. They're kind of influenced by it, but these guys. They are it. You know, they are a post-punk band that I just love. I can see them becoming rather big in Holland. They have already signed to a bigger label, which sadly doesn't do vinyl. But these guys are pretty big on vinyl themselves, so uh, they might release some vinyl somewhere. Anyway, I hope they will become huge in Holland. This is Rats on Rats number six. Number five is J Masses, Several Shades of Y. It is an acoustic Dinosaur Jr. album. If you love Dinosaur Jr., check this one out because it has the same quality and same strength as the Dinosaur Jr. albums, except it's acoustic. It's a wonderful, wonderful package. Uh, I love the cover. It's this drawing. It's just amazing. And the music. Uh, this guy, I'm a I'm a big fan of Jay Masters and Dinosaur Jr. I have all their stuff on CD. <sighs> yeah, CDs, I know. But you know, the guy just continues to amaze me. He's a great, great musician. This is a great, great album. So there you are. Number four, I believe. Yeah, Mogwai, Hardcore will never die, but you will. Don't need to say much about this. Um, a lot of people in the VC have this double album. I also have the American release. Um, maybe I should have waited a little longer and get the European release, which probably wouldn't be that different. Maybe the cover would, wouldn't be as thick cardboard, but I don't know. Could be. Um, but this is just, you know, I love Mogwai. It's one of another one of those bands that 
can do wrong with me. Um, a lot of album, later albums that they did, the albums before this, people don't seem to like it, but I don't get it. I mean, it's Mogwai. You know, they changed little things here, but it's not like they've changed our total sound, which makes this album so much different from the previous work. But somehow this caught on. People really enjoyed this, and that's for a good reason, because it's a really good album. Mogwai. Number three. Battles. Gloss Drop. Uh, just this kind of surprised me. It, it this had to grow on me. I, I really enjoyed it. I had heard uh, the song Ice Cream, which is just a great, great track, and uh, it, it it grew on me. I mean, the cover itself is both beautiful and disgusting at the same time. But this is this is one of those growers, and it grew and it grew and it grew, and it's just wonderful, wonderful, uh, great, great album. Uh, only four tracks are uh, have vocals, but the other songs they're hypnotic. They're just powerful, powerful songs, and this is a great band. Number three, number two, and maybe I'm a little, you know high with this album. I mean, it's a really good album, but like I said, I'm, I created this on the whim, this list, and uh, maybe if I had listened to every single album that I bought, this might have, you know, still be in the top ten, but a lot lower. Anyway, this is the second place. Erzatch GB, The Fall. Um, took them only a year to release this after your future are clutter. Um, so it's not a long absence from them. It's just a, a really solid, hard rocking album by them, and uh, I can't help it. But I love uh, Marky Smith when he's pissed off, and he's pissed off on his own. And my favorite, favorite album of 2011 came out, I believe, either January or February. Um, and it's a band I've been obsessing with throughout the whole of 2011. And that's Deiru. This is Deiru versus Evil. I just love this band. This is such a wonderful, wonderful band. And you know, every time they come to Holland, I just want to see them play because they are having fun playing. Um, Greg Saunier. I think that's how you pronounce his name. This is this guy. He's a drummer. He's fucking awesome. Um, the guitar players, those two guys, are just freaking insane. The way they they play off each other, and then um, her name is pretty difficult for me to pronounce. Satomi Matsusaki. She does vocals, and she plays bass, and she's. I mean. She's she's a wonderful person, but she's cute as hell. Um, her voice, you either like it or you don't, but it's this like really soft voice, and compared to the rather you know experimental and, and large sound of Deerhoof, it just works so perfect. This is the uh, pink, clear pink vinyl release, and you know, if you haven't picked this one up yet. Please check out Deerhoof, please, because this is just a, an amazing band, and I mean, probably all their records are are easily available. Their their uh, 2003 or 2005, I don't know. Their their Reveal album is getting a reissue soon, so uh, that makes all of their records pretty easy to get. Um, this is just a, a, an amazing album. It's my favorite of 2011, without question. No matter what else I would have changed in my list, this would have stayed number one. So, there you go. This is my top ten. Um, and that's it. Hope you guys are doing well. And uh, take care. Peace.